Welcome everyone. In this video, we will solve multiple choice question related to linear differential equation. In case if you are new to the channel, you should subscribe it because here you will get maths related content which will help you in throughout your BTEC program. So let's start. So the first problem is find the interval on which the differential equation is normal. So how to solve this kind of question and this kind of questions are very important usually asked in the exam. So you write the differential equation that is y dash is equal to 3y by x. But first of all we have to write the differential equation in the standard form. So this is uh, we multiply x in the left hand side we get xy dash minus 3y is equal to 0. To find the interval in which differential equation is normal we look at the coefficient of uh, different uh, terms of y in the left hand side means different terms of y means uh, here we have y dash y so there are just two terms of y y dash and y so what is the coefficient of y dash uh, that is usually known as a naught x means the coefficient of the highest order term so a naught x here is equal to x uh, what is a one x that is the coefficient of the next uh, derivative of y but here just one derivative of y is there so the next coefficient will be the coefficient of y so a1 x is equal to minus 3 and rx the right hand side is equal to 0 see one more thing in case if you want to learn these concepts in detail you should watch the video that I already have uploaded uh, related to linear differential equation so uh, we have got three coefficient here a naught x that is x that is minus 3 and then 0 now first thing that we have to check that where these uh, you know uh, uh, coefficients are continuous. So these coefficients that is x minus 3 and 0 are everywhere continuous. Why it is everywhere continuous? Because uh, polynomial functions let me write because polynomial polynomials and constant function constant functions are everywhere continuous everywhere continuous right so there is no point at which these functions are not continuous so uh, there is no such problem next thing means it is continuous in the whole interval that is minus infinity to infinity next thing that we have to look at that uh, we have to find the point at which a naught x becomes 0 so we are going to find that point where a naught x is equal to 0 so this implies uh, that x is equal to 0 now we have to exclude this point or rather if you want to see it like this that we are going to find all those points at which a naught x is equal to 0 and uh, here uh, since a naught x is x so if x is equal to 0 I need to exclude those points from this uh, interval so how to exclude those points the interval is minus infinity to infinity and you have 0 here so you have not to consider 0 because at 0 the a naught x becomes 0 so the interval will be basically minus infinity to 0 and at 0 it will be open 0 will not be included and then 0 to infinity yes or no because 0 we have to exclude it can also be written as the set of real number minus the uh, element 0 or another way of writing that minus infinity to 0 and 0 to infinity so if you look at the options provided here minus infinity to 0 is also present and 0 to infinity is also present but here the D option is that both A and B are true so we have to select the D option because that is the most appropriate option okay I hope you got it next question and here this question is similar to the one we have just discussed so we will be spending less time on this here what is the coefficient of highest order term that is uh, y double dash is a naught x is equal to 1 plus x square then a 1 x is equal to 2 x and then a 2 x that is the coefficient of y is equal to 1 and what is the right hand side right hand side r x is equal to 0 now this is a polynomial function this is a polynomial function this is a constant function this is a constant function and we just have seen in the previous problem that that polynomial functions are everywhere continuous 
and constant function a is also everywhere continuous so all these functions are continuous in the whole real line set like minus infinity to infinity another thing that we have to uh, see that where this 1 plus x square will become 0 so 1 plus x square uh, is never equal to 0 is not equal to 0 because x square is always positive you, if you take any x uh, then x square we know for any real value of uh, uh, real value x x square is always greater than or equal to 0 right if x is equal to 0 then it will be equal to 0 in all other cases it will be greater than or uh, you know 0 so what is x square plus 1 x square plus 1 will be greater than or equal to 1 so this can never be 0 so we don't have to exclude any point it means what that the differential equation will be normal in the whole interval minus infinity to infinity so the correct option is this okay easy question now these questions are very very easy and i hope that you must have to answer this kind of questions in the exam because it should not take much effort to solve this so find the general solution of the differential equation y double dash minus y is equal to zero so to solve this kind of the differential equation first thing that you have to write is the auxiliary equation and the auxiliary equation is for y double dash we write m square and then we don't have any other derivative of y for uh, y the coefficient is minus one so we write m square minus one is equal to zero so if i solve it i will get two roots that is m is um, m minus one into m plus one is equal to zero so m is equal to one and minus one so these two are real roots and distinct roots as well so when we get two uh, real and distinct roots we write the solution as the constant into e to the power m one x so one x plus another constant that is b and e to the power m two x that is minus one x so basically we get what a e to the power x plus b e to the power minus x that is equal to y so this is the solution see if you don't know how to solve it uh, i have explained it in you know uh, solving this question but if you want to learn about this in detail then uh, watch that video which i already have highlighted now this kind of question is also very important the function these are linearly independent on so what is the concept here we know the concept that to check the linear dependence or independence of the function we calculate the Ronskian value and there are two possibility the Ronskian value may be zero or the Ronskian value may not be equal to zero so if the Ronskian value is equal to zero in an interval then uh, the function is linearly linearly dependent in that interval right dependent and if it is not equal to zero then in that interval the functions are linearly independent now you might be thinking that how to calculate the Ronskian so to calculate the Ronskian the idea is that since we have three functions here one sin x and cos x this will be a three cross three order determinant so i will write uh, in the first row i will write this three function that is one sin x and cos x as the second row uh, what we have to do we have to differentiate the functions in the first row so if i differentiate one i will get zero if i differentiate sin x i will get cos x if i differentiate cos x i will get minus sin x and in the third row i need to uh, differentiate the second row again or uh, we can also say it like that we have to differentiate the first row twice so we already have differentiated the first row once and we have got this row now uh, for this we if we differentiate derivative of 0 is equal to 0 derivative of cos x is equal to minus sin x and it is minus derivative of sin x is cos x so if we expand the determinant along the first column the other two elements are 0 so i will just get 1 into cos x into minus cos x so that is minus cos square x and minus minus plus sin square x so i have to write minus sin square x so this is basically what this is minus cos square x plus sin square x so that is equal to minus 1 and uh, if you look at this value that's minus 1 can never be 0 right so this will be linearly independent in the whole uh, you know 
largest possible interval in which this is linearly independent is minus infinity to infinity because if it is not equal to 0 and it is not dependent on any value of x this is a constant so it can never be 0 so it means that the function is linearly independent in the interval minus infinity to infinity so the correct option is c let us solve this question quickly and to solve this uh, i'm not going to uh, you know uh, wait i'm just going to explain it so uh, first of all we have to write the auxiliary equation so what is the auxiliary equation y double dash m square y dash m and then y so the constant term minus x is equal to 0 we have to factorize this so m square plus 3m minus 2m and minus 6 is equal to 0 so what we do we take m common we get m plus 3 minus 2 common m plus 3 is equal to 0 so this will give me this will give me what m plus 3 into m minus 2 is equal to 0 so the roots of the auxiliary equation are minus 3 and 2 so what will be the general solution a constant time e to the power m1 x that is minus 3 x plus b e to the power m2 x that is 2 x so which option will be correct minus 3 x and 2 x right so this option will be correct i hope uh, other options are like different it is minus 2 x here it is x e to the power minus 2x and here it is both plus. So the C option is correct, right? Let us move to the next question. And this is also a similar but it has a slightly different idea. Uh, if I have to solve this differential equation, the auxiliary equation will be for y double dash m square for y dash 2m and for y the constant term is 1 so is equal to 1 so 0. Now, what is special about this that for this auxiliary equation, the roots that I will be getting will be equal roots. Like we are getting two values of m that is minus 1 and minus 1 and both are same. See, one mistake usually people make that when they write the root, they write m is equal to minus 1. No, since it is a quadratic equation, it is a polynomial of degree 3. So, it must have two roots or you can also see it like this that in any differential equation of order 2, its auxiliary equation will always have two roots that is minus 1 and minus 1. So when the roots are repeated, how do you write the solution? You write the solution as a plus bx and e to the power minus x. I hope you understand it. Uh, the idea is that suppose you have two roots m1 is equal to m2 is equal to m, right? Suppose the two roots are equal uh, and its value is m. Then we, in that case, we write the solution as c1 plus c2x e to the power mx. If we have three roots like m1 is equal to m2 is equal to m3 and all of them is equal to m, then we write the solution as y is equal to c1 plus c2x plus c2x square e to the power mx. So here, what will be the correct option? a plus bx e to the power x, not correct a plus bx e to the power minus x so this option is correct okay now let us move to the next question and this is an interesting question here now if you note this this is uh, another way of writing the same differential equation like this can also be written as y double dash plus 4y is equal to 0 right so if i have to solve this uh, first of all we have to write the auxiliary equation and here writing the auxiliary equation is even simpler for d we will write m so m square plus 4 is equal to 0 so you know what will happen here here the m square value will be equal to minus 4 means you will be getting two roots uh, which are uh, imaginary pair of roots so this m square is equal to minus 4 so m is equal to plus minus under root sorry plus minus 2i uh, actually it is minus un uh, under root minus 4 so under root minus 4 is plus minus 2i so these are imaginary pair of root and if you know that if you have imaginary pair of root like alpha plus minus i beta you write your solution like e to the power alpha x c1 cos beta x plus c2 sin beta x right so what is your alpha here there is no alpha means alpha is equal to 0 and what is beta here beta here is equal to 2 so your solution will be e to the power 0 x and since they are using the constant a and b so let me use a uh, cos beta that is 2x and plus b sin 2x and since e to the power 0x is 1 so basically the answer will be 
a cos 2x plus b sin 2x. So, which answer will be correct? I think this answer will be correct. Okay. So, let us solve the next problem. This is a slightly different problem. So, in previous problems, uh, they have given us a differential equation and we are asking me to find the solution. Now, here the solution is given. So, let me read it. Find a differential equation of the form. This would look like this. For which the functions 1 and e to the power minus 2x are solution. So, how do you solve it? Uh, see, when we are writing the solution, the solution uh, of a, a differential equation, linear differential equation, appear in the form of e to the power mx, right? And if it has a solution like e to the power mx, means this corresponds to the root m of the auxiliary equation, right? So, if you compare 1 by e to the power mx, basically it can be seen as e to the power 0x. So, e to the power 0x will correspond to the root m is equal to 0, right? And if you look at e to the power minus 2x, here uh, it will correspond to the, the root m is equal to minus 2, right? Don't make the mistake. E uh, is equal to minus 2x, so m is equal to minus 2 and for 1, m will be equal to 0, right? Because 1 can be seen as e to the power 0x. Now you have two roots, 0 and minus 2. So what will be the auxiliary equation? How do you write it? So you write m minus 0 into m minus minus 2. So m minus minus 2 will become m plus 2. I hope you got it. And that is equal to 0. So if this is the auxiliary equation, it will look like m square plus 2m is equal to 0. So now you have to uh, think in the reverse uh, direction. If m square is there, means m square comes for what? m square comes for y double dash. And uh, if m is there, then it comes for what? Then this comes for y dash. So y double dash plus 2y dash is equal to 0. So which option will be correct? The option B will be correct. Some of you may say that what about CY? So here there is no C because C can be taken as 0. And this differential equation can also be seen as y double dash plus 2y dash plus 0y is equal to 0. So this is actually in the same form only, right? So the correct option will be B. Okay, this is kind of, uh, you know, observation based problem. So the differential equation is, what kind of differential equation is this? It is linear? No, it is not linear. Why it is not linear? Because here you see that y double dash is multiplied by y. So this is not linear, right? So this option can't be correct. Is it homogeneous? No, it is not homogeneous because the right hand side is equal to sin x, which is not equal to 0. So this is not homogeneous. It is of order 3. I am looking at the last option first. It is of order 3. No, the highest order derivative present in the differential equation is 2. So this is not of order 3. So what is this answer? This answer is nonlinear. Because it was not linear, so I could have guessed it is nonlinear. But just to highlight the other uh, characteristic of it, you can see that this differential equation is not linear. Okay. Now again the same problem and you know why I am taking these problems multiple times because this is kind of important and here also we are going to solve it very quickly. So here the coefficients are uh, a naught x is equal to what? a naught x is equal to x square, a1 x is equal to minus 4x and a2 x is equal to 6 and what is the right hand side? The right hand side is equal to uh, uh, x. So this is a polynomial, this is a polynomial, this is a constant function, this is a polynomial. So this is everywhere continuous, right? So it is continuous in the whole minus infinity to infinity interval. So another thing is that we have to exclude those points at which x square becomes 0. So where x square becomes 0, it becomes 0 at x, right? x is equal to 0. If x square is equal to 0, means x is equal to 0. So from the set of uh, a real line or a real number set, we have to exclude the point 0. Means what? We have to take all the points from minus infinity to 0. And you know that at minus infinity interval is always open at 0. Since we have to exclude 0, we are, uh, you know, keeping an open interval. And then we have to take 0 because we want to exclude 0. We don't want to include 0. So 0 to infinity. So which option will be correct? Minus infinity to 0 is the first option. 0 to infinity is the second option. But they have provided us uh, another option where both A and B are there. So I will choose the most appropriate that is the D option. Okay. I hope you are getting this. Okay. So if you have arrived up to this problem and still have not liked the video, 
please first like and then continue so now let us solve this question find the interval on which the differential equation is normal so another question of same type so here i am going to write directly what is a not x gentleman gentleman there is no a coefficient of y double dash so a not x is 1 right what is a 2 x a 2 x is equal to uh, 3 what is a 3 x so sorry this is a 1 uh, I made a mistake here there is not a mistake but you can just you know uh, uh, let me rewrite it we are calling the highest order coefficient as a not x not as uh, you know a 1 x so let me rewrite it sorry a not x is equal to 1 here a 1 x is equal to 3 and a 2 x is equal to under root x right and what is the right hand side the right hand side is equal to sin x right now this is a constant function this is a constant function so everywhere continuous and sin x and cos x functions are also everywhere continuous even exponential functions are everywhere continuous but if you just look at this uh, a 2 x this a 2 x thing is defined when uh, means a 2 x is equal to under root x and this is defined when x is greater than or equal to 0 if it is 0 then it will be 0 but if it is negative then it will give me imaginary number right so x should be greater than or equal to 0 so we can only take those points for which x is greater than or equal to 0 so here there is a slightly different thing and a not x should not be equal to 0 so a not x actually is equal to 1 so certainly it can never be equal to 0 right so now what will be the interval the interval will be that we have to take all those points which are starting at 0 and going up to infinity right so the correct answer will be uh, 0 to infinity because here we are not taking any points which are less than 0 means we are taking all those points which are in the right of 0 so this side so 0 to infinity will be the correct answer here okay now uh, another Ronskian related problem we have seen one problem where I was finding the linear dependence and independent but here they are just asking you to find the value of the Ronskian so how do you calculate Ronskian in case if you have already understood pause the video solve it yourself but uh, I am continuing so here the first row you write the functions that is x x square and x cube in the second row you uh, differentiate the function uh, the first row and then you write so derivative of x is 1 derivative of x square is 2x derivative of x cube is 3x square then you differentiate 1 0 2x 2 3x square 6x yes and now if you have to expand this it is easier to expand this about the first column because we have a 0 there so let us expand this so x and 2x into 6x how much 12x square minus 2 into 3x square 6x square then minus 1 and this row will be left out this column will be left out so x square into 6x so that will be giving me 6x cube and 2 into uh, x cube right so minus 2x cube so what did I get I, I got uh, 12x square minus 6x x square so 6x square into x so that will give me 6x cube and minus 6x cube and minus 2x cube that is 4x cube so 6x cube minus 4x cube is 2x cube so what is the value of the round skin the value of the round skin is 2x cube right I hope you got it the round skin of the function I think we did a similar problem like the round skin of the function if I have to calculate w I don't want to spend much time here uh, 1 first row 1 sin x cos x second row 0 derivative of sin x uh, is cos x derivative of cos x is minus sin x again 0 derivative of cos x is minus sin x and minus sin x is cos x uh, so with a negative sign of course so cos x into minus cos x that is minus cos x square x and minus this this minus and minus will become plus so this will be minus sin x square x so this will be like equal to minus 1 so the correct answer is a I think we did a similar problem kind of repetition slightly different way of putting it another question uh, so you see in this uh, kind of topic uh, especially if you are solving uh, MTH 174 problems in unit number two you have to solve the questions where you have to find the interval differential equations are normal Ronskian and solving homogeneous linear differential equation with constant coefficient 
So this is an EG example and this is an EG unit for you I think. So you should focus on this. So find the solution of the differential equation. So how to find the solution? Uh, we have to write the auxiliary equation first. So for y double dash m square for y dash minus m and then the constant term is equal to minus 6. So I will write equal to 0 and then I will factorize it. So m square minus m I will write minus 2 uh, sorry minus 3m and then plus 2m minus 6 is equal to 0. I hope you know how to factorize it. So m common m minus 3 plus 2 common m minus 3 is equal to 0. So we are getting what? We are getting m minus 3 into m plus 2 equal to 0. So the roots will be now 3 and minus 2. So the solution will be a e to the power 3x plus b e to the power minus 2x. So which option will be correct? This will not be correct. This will not be correct because we have x here. a e to the power 3x, b e to the power minus 2x. So this option will be correct. I hope up to this there is no challenge. This is a slightly interesting problem because uh, here the students may make a lot of mistakes. The first thing that you need to observe here that this is a differential equation of order 4. Basically the differential equation is d square plus 4 square y is equal to 0. So this is nothing but d to the power 4 plus 8 d square plus 16 y is equal to 0. Yes. But since they already have given us in a very nice way, this is just to explain to you. But suppose we have to solve it. So what will be the auxiliary equation? The auxiliary equation in this case will be m square plus 4 square is equal to 0. When we have the differential equation in this form, it is easier to write. We just replace the d by m. So m square plus 4 square is equal to 0. And you know what students will do here? They will make a mistake. They will consider the roots as m is equal to plus minus 2i right and then they will ignore the other roots i hope you understand that they actually there are two factors of m square plus 4 so this is basically m square plus 4 into m square plus 4 is equal to 0. so one factor m square plus 4 will give you one pair of imaginary root that is plus minus 2i and another factor will give you another pair of imaginary root that is plus minus 2a and when you have two pair of imaginary roots suppose uh, just let me explain it separately like if you have suppose roots like alpha plus minus i beta and again alpha plus minus i beta right then in that case you write your solution like uh, c1 plus c2x right and uh, before that you multiply it by e to the power alpha x let me rewrite here just so how do you write the solution you write y is equal to e to the power alpha x and then c1 plus c2 x cos beta x and plus c3 plus c4 x sine beta x this is how you write the solution when you get two pair of imaginary roots which are same here you are getting plus minus 2y plus minus 2y means what is alpha here alpha here is 0 means this term e to the power 0 x will become 1 and what is beta so beta here is 2 so what will be the solution the solution will be this first e to the power 0 x will become 1 and since they are writing the answer in the coefficient a b so I am going to write it a the first plus b x and cos beta x that is cos 2x and plus uh, another constant c plus dx and sine 2x. I hope you got it. So the correct option here will be c. This question uh, should be seen carefully uh, because suppose I quickly you know take uh, a similar question and suppose I ask you that solve the differential equation d to the power 4 cube y is equal to 0. So you know what will happen? you will have three pair of imaginary root that is one plus minus 2y another plus minus 2y and third pair of imaginary root plus minus 2y and in that case what will you write the solution i am writing here in the top you will write first term c1 plus c2x plus c3x square 
alpha e to the power uh, alpha x will be 0 because sorry e to the power 0x will be 1 because alpha is 0 and into cos 2x plus so first part is c1 plus c2x plus c3x square cos 2x and uh, c4 plus c5x plus c6x square sin 2x so this is how you write the solution when you have three pair of imaginary roots and since you are a smart i hope you might already have guessed that if we have four pair of imaginary root or five pair of imaginary root we will proceed like the same way okay now let us solve this problem quickly find the solution of this differential equation so when we have, uh, we have this kind of problem it becomes easier for us to find the root we don't actually have to even write the auxiliary equation so because we can see clearly from there the d plus 2 so one of the root will be like minus 2 and d minus 1 is square so there are two factors so the root will be 1 and 1 see the mistake usually that you make is that you write minus 2 and 1 you don't include the next one first of all you need to understand that the order of this differential equation is 3 because this term will give you d square and d so it will have d cube that is the third order derivative and its general solution should contain how many arbitrary constant three arbitrary constant because order is three so what will be the solution here solution will be y is equal to a e to the power minus 2x plus the second constant b and these two roots are repeated roots right repeated roots so i will write b plus cx e to the power x so the correct option will be a okay okay so this is another interesting question find the solution of the differential equation and this is order 4 differential equation d to the power 4 so what will be the auxiliary equation m to the power 4 minus 5 m square plus 4 is equal to 0 so first let us factorize this so m to the power 4 and minus 5 m square uh, square can be written as 4 m square minus m square plus 4 is equal to 0 which I can factorize further that m square can be taken common. I will write m square minus 4 minus 1 m square minus 4 is equal to 0. So I will get m square minus 4 into m square minus 1 is equal to 0. So this will give me m is equal to plus minus root 2, 2 and minus 2. And here it will give me m is equal to plus minus 1 m square minus 1 basically is what m plus 1 into m minus 1 yes or no and m square minus 4 is basically what m plus 2 into m minus 2 yes or no this is 2 so that is why we are getting root 2 minus 2 1 minus 1 so what will be the correct solution i am not writing uh, i can see from here so a e to the power minus x b e to the power x c e to the power minus 2x d e to the power 2x so this option is correct this is certainly not correct because only two constants are there here you have x so that is wrong and here you are multiplying x so that is also wrong so these three options are wrong okay let us solve one more question and this is again a slightly different one find uh, sorry form a homogeneous linear differential equation of the lowest order whose solutions are which solutions are given by 1 e to the power 2x and x e to the power 2x this is an interesting question ladies and gentlemen because they have given us three solutions and they are asking uh, us to write the lowest order differential equation it means that the order of the differential equation should be three it can't be less than three because they have given us three independent solution so one as we have seen in the previous problem one corresponds to e to the power zero x because if the solution is 1 and solution appear in the form of e to the power mx so 1 can be seen as e to the power 0x so this corresponds to the root m is equal to 0 another is e to the power 2x so this corresponds to the root m is equal to 2 and you know the third solution is x e to the power 2x so it means that this also corresponds to the root 2 I hope you understand this because we have seen earlier that suppose we have the repeated roots m m then we write our general solution as c1 plus c2 x e to the power mx so can you see it is like c1 e to the power mx plus 
c2 x e to the power mx so we are having two independent solution one is e to the power mx and another is x e to the power mx suppose not for this problem suppose i talk about in a general situation suppose somewhere we are having the solution like uh, you know e to the power 2x x e to the power 2x and x square e to the power 2x so in that case it will correspond to the root 2 this will also correspond to 2 and this will also correspond to 2 so that is something that you need to keep in mind now we have uh, the roots 0 2 and minus 2 so what will be the auxiliary equation auxiliary equation will be m minus 0 into m minus 2 into m minus 2 is equal to 0 so this will give me what this will give me m into m square minus 4 m plus 4 is equal to 0 so this will give me m cube minus 4 m square plus 4 m is equal to 0 and for m cube we write y triple dash for m square we write y double dash for m we write y dash that is equal to 0 so this is the correct answer which option will be correct y triple dash uh, here we have minus 4 y dash so this can't be correct y triple dash minus 4 y double dash plus 4 y dash so this option will be correct right uh, i hope other options are different okay so this is how you solve this kind of problem so uh, students we have discussed uh, a large number of multiple choice question i think this was uh, 18th or 19th question okay so uh, please uh, subscribe the channel in case if you have enjoyed the video like the video as well and share with everyone for uh, because they it, it will help uh, in their exam as well so make sure that uh, this video is reaching to the maximum number of audience right and i'm going to upload next video as well so uh, sometimes a student uh, contact me separately and ask me that sir when you are going to upload the next video so i think that youtube provides you an option of pressing the bell icon so whenever you whenever i upload a video you get the notification that the video has been uploaded right thanks for watching